What's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, the Villa Filling Trilligan, and we are back on Fate Stay Night. It's been a few days since I recorded, um, and uh, yesterday I recorded Crooked Man. I'm gonna be dropping the first video of that today. Huh. Okay. I'll probably talk about it at the end of the video if I remember to. So let's just get into it. I don't wanna waste y'all time. Let's get into it. Last episode, something happened. Oh, we killed, we killed Berserker. And now Shiro has an ability to like materialize fucking weapons and shit from nothing. Oh my goodness. Let's get into it though. We fucking killed Berserker. That was so awesome. We are on February 12th, Fate, Day 13, Infinity Arms. The sky was a still pale gray. Was it dawn or dusk? It's hard to tell. The vast sky overhead and the wide field stretching out on all sides. The sky seemed close enough to touch. Clouds, low enough to grab hold of. This was one of the battlefields she fought on. But there was no longer any cavalry in her service. The sprawling golden meadow was gone. Instead, unfolding under the dull sky, was the remnant of a battlefield. No emotion. She must have seen this kind of thing almost daily. Her desolate heart was empty. As she leaned against the golden sword, she exhaled deeply and let her shoulders relax. The battlefield must have, the battle must have ended. After glancing over the bodies of the defeated soldiers, she returned to her camp. Those were the battles she experienced. Her cold, calm demeanor remained unchanged. No matter the predicament she's been in, she remained just like the woman I've always known. And then I see the dream of a king. The moment she drew the sword, she stopped being human. She took over for her father as a feudal lord and became the, a king with many knights. She was known as King Arthur and Altria. The life of the girl who once aspired to be a knight changed so radically. Okay, so I was right, King Arthur. She acted like she was the king's son. The ruler of territories and knights had to be male. Only her father and the maids knew the king was female. She covered herself in iron and hid the truth for the rest of her life. There were those who had their suspicions, but the king of knights who wielded the sword knew neither injury nor age. Excalibur was blessed with the protection of the fairies, making its possessor immortal. As such, nobody questioned her tiny frame, which was much too small for a knight or her face which may have appeared girlish. Instead, she was hailed as a truly beautiful king. And in fact, the king was invincible. Neither size nor appearance mattered. Those who lived in fear of the savage invader desired a strong king. And the valiant knights who followed, who follow only a su truly a superior leader. The king satisfied each of these conditions. And so, nobody questioned the king's identity. It did not matter if the king was a child or a woman. All that mattered was that, was that the king protected the nation. The new king was made was fair and selfless and always stood on the front line, fighting and defeating the nation's enemies on the battlefield. Many enemies and citizens died, but the king was always just and she played her role as king better than anyone else. There was no room to suspect otherwise and any such suspicion would be pointless while the king was right in any case. She knew no defeat on the battlefield. Her army re reformed the lost cavalry, then charged across the battlefield, defeating foreign infantry and smashing to their defenses. Did she always stand on the front lines because her nation was behind her? Before she headed out to battle, she had to cast aside so many citizens. Once she was on a battlefield, she had to cut down all her enemies. As her battles were fought in defense of her nation, it was common to wring villages dry to support the army. In that sense, no knight killed as many as she did. 
I can't tell if she ever really felt that burden. It's not something I can really know from a dream, but I do know she didn't have a moment's doubt or hesitation on the battlefield. Grief never touched her th thoughts when she sat on the throne. A king is not human. Human emotions will make it impossible to protect people. She kept to her oath, never wavering. She addressed the issues facing her nation, and she worked on matters of political concern. She ruled without wavering, and she punished the deserving without error. And after winning so many battles, unifying so many clans, and punishing hundreds of criminals, King Arthur doesn't have a human heart. One of the knights in her entourage murmured this. Everyone must have felt the same way. The more perfectly she carried herself as a king, the more everyone questioned their monarch. There's no way someone devoid of human emotion can rule humans. Several reputable knights left the White Castle of Camelot, but the king accepted this as inevitable and incorporated it into her rule. And so the fair king, once so admired by her knights, began to isolate herself. Such trivialities, such trivialities were no concern to the king. Even if she were deserted, feared or betrayed, her heart will remain unchanged. It couldn't be helped. The moment she took that sword, she abandoned her emotions. And then her final battle began. The battle at Badon Hill ended in a complete victory. And that inescapable conclusion led to the savage clans finally offering peace. And so the nation that had been holding its breath, waiting to be destroyed, knew a moment of peace. The age of warfare where a nation leaned on a singular hero came to an end. Britain was finally going to become the nation she'd always dreamed of. The scene starts to fade away. I realize the dream is ending and I'm about to wake up. I can feel myself drifting closer to wakefulness. But before that happens, something really pisses me off. She's stupid. Oh, she's strong and a gifted fighter. But there's a difference between being good at fighting and being cut out for it. The people around her pissed me off too. If she didn't notice it, someone else around her would have told her, or she would have gone go on making the same mistake forever. Seriously, how the hell does she have so many people around her but not one told her the truth? What truth? I wake up. We escaped Ilya's forest and returned home yesterday afternoon. So Sokka went back to her room complaining her stomach hurt. I don't fucking blame her. And my headache wasn't getting any better, so we all just decided to go to sleep. It must have been the extra weight I was lugging around. As soon as I got into bed, I couldn't get back up. Sarah was the only one who seemed fine. <laughs> and so Sokka and I left her to guard the house while we slept. And then... So I slept for half a day. At least my headache's gone. I'm relieved. The whole thing with Berserker. The headache I got after copying Saber's sword was unreal. If I kept up, my head might have just split right down the middle. Then I noticed. Huh? Saber's sitting on the floor right next to my head. Saber! Why are you glaring like me like why are you glaring at me like that first thing in the morning? Did something happen while I was asleep? No. I simply had a dream. Huh? No, it is nothing. Let us have breakfast. It is time to wake up. Saber gets up and heads silently out of my room. The fuck was that about? I don't know why Saber's acting strange. I'm really not sure, but. If she was sitting by my bedside the whole time, was she nursing me back to health? What a sweetheart. Stop. Don't do that. The moment I have that thought, the scene from last night comes back to me. Oh, what the hell am I thinking? I shake my head to rid myself of those impure thoughts. That night, my contact with Saber was entirely about my duty as a master. If I don't rationalize it like that, I'll never be able to look at Saber again. Calm thoughts. Calm thoughts. Calm down, cock. Calm down. Stay down. Stay down, boy. Down, boy. We acted normal when we were coming home yesterday. Maybe because y'all just got done killing Hercules. That's all I need to do. No, I was actually just tired yesterday. But I still need to act normal. 
Besides, Seven wouldn't like me acting like this. All right. I should need to calm down and make breakfast. I take a deep breath and get changed. It's nine in the morning. Saber hasn't eaten since lunch yesterday, so she must be hungry. Nine is so late. It's practically not even morning anymore. As hungry as Saber must be, I should probably make a hearty breakfast. Shiro, is it just you and I this morning? Do we not need to wake Rin up? No, everyone's still asleep. Considering what happened yesterday, it's probably best to let them sleep. I'll leave their food out, and they can eat whenever they like. They? They? The fuck do you mean, they? Did he bring home Ilya? I see. Then I would appreciate it if you prepared the meal quickly. It is much later than usual. I know. I feel better now. So let's head, let's head up to the dojo when we finish eating. No! The, the dojo? Do you intend to continue your training with me? Why not? It's our daily routine. What's wrong, Saber? Did I see something weird? Oh, no. I just assumed we would no longer be training. With Berserker defeated, I thought there would be no further reason for you to continue training as we had been. I see. You know you may be right. The common enemy we all share in Berserker is gone now. We teamed up to take on an enemy far stronger than us, and that's also why I trained so furiously in such a shorter period of time. Uh, but I'd like to keep up training. I'm still an untrained mage, and I, I get to see the real you when you wield a sword. That makes it easier for me to talk to you, too. Well, I say easy, but what I mean is that I kind of enjoy it. So, I reveal my true self when I am in the dojo. That's your persona. You sure do. At least you don't hold back. I prefer it that way. Besides, I think you get to loosen up as well. Anyway. I routine has been as far as the voyage. Don't take the few pleasures I have. I take the ground beef and pork, green onions, mushrooms, onions, and eggs out of the refrigerator and head to the kitchen. All right, what is he making? What is he making? Let me think. Hold on, hold on. Let me think. Eggs is what's throwing me off here. Eggs is what's throwing me off. And ground beef. Okay, what can he be making with ground beef? Shit. I don't know any... I can't think of any dishes that call for all of those together. What is he making? Damn. I, I give up. All I need is panko, sake, and cooking oil. I don't know what the hell that is. The fuck is a panko? Well then, I have no objections. Why she look... The way that... The way they draw their fists is so funny, bro. It's just... <laughs> Bro, it just looks like a it looks like a square with some lines drawn through it, man. That's so funny. She got some fat ass hands. Huh? Well then I have no objections. But Saber mumbles quietly to herself in the living room while I work. I can't quite hear what she's saying from the kitchen. I want you, Saber. Smack, smack, pound, pound. We beating that meat. I mix onions, panko, sake, egg, salt with 400 grams of ground beef and pork and knead it all together. Oh, Hamburg steak. I do not know what the fuck that is. I've decided to be bold today. So I'm making Japan, I'm making stewed Japanese style Hamburg steak for breakfast. Rin, are you awake? Sabre's voice drifts out of the living room. Dosaka, I glance back over my shoulder as I cook. Morning. Hey, I'm gonna pour myself a cup of milk, Shiro. Tosaka comes in looking grumpy, good looking grumpy, and grabs a carton of milk from the fridge. You can drink from the ga you can drink from the gallon if you like. Ah, I slept too much. My head hurts. Hey, what's this? You really going all out this morning, aren't you? Where'd that grumpy face you've been making a second ago go? Her eyes are practically sparkling now. You. Fat fuck! Get out my damn plate! Oh, that looks good. And here I was starting to get hungry. This is perfect. Fuck out my kitchen, bro. Go sit down. 
Is that so? Well, she's the one who gets to enjoy herself here, not me. Reminds me of what my old man used to say. Someone gains, someone else loses. I've thought this before, but you've got a keen eye. Well, I'm just a discerning sort. Looking forward to this breakfast you're making, though. She wins, she heads back to the living room. All right, where's the other they? Hold on, where's the they at? We got we got the them, so where's the they? Oh, I'm sorry, that was stupid. That was stupid. All right, terrible pun. I apologize. Beat me with the hammer if you want. That was a terrible pun. So where's the other half of they? With a glass of milk in one hand. So Sokka plops down at the table. Seriously. I don't know where she gets off acting like the king of the castle here in my fucking house. You are certainly lazy today, Ren. Yeah, way to go, Saber. She's saying something I wish I could. Get her ass. However... Tosaki dismisses Saber's criticism nonchalantly by just a creep. <laughs> she like me for real, bro. You can call me lazy. I'll just be like, shit, I am. <laughs> I'm lazy as hell. <laughs> of course I'm lazy now. With Berserker gone, now we should have to deal with Caster, Lancer, and Assassin. They're nothing compared to Berserker. Should be a cakewalk for Saber. You do not know that. Defeating Lancer and Assassin may not be as straightforward as you think. And we have yet to meet Caster. Don't be so humble. No ordinary heroic spirit is any match for King Arthur. We've solved your magical energy problem. So there's no servant who can best you now. Sibra narrows her eyes at Osaka. I have the same reaction. We shouldn't let what Osaka said there just go by. Tosaka, do you know who Saber is? I had a hunch, but yesterday confirmed my suspicions. Only one hero can wield a sacred sword like that. I mean, I was a little surprised to learn that the legendary King Arthur was a girl, but I can't really argue against that when she's sitting right in front of me. Besides, legends are rewritten all the time, right? I don't know if Saber was the one who hid it or if the people around her did. But I guess there was a problem with having a girl as be king in medieval times. So I don't blame them for saying she was a man. Tosaka's tone remains the same. Saber at least doesn't seem to mind. If anything, she seems to agree with Tosaka. She certainly doesn't seem about to argue. She's basically acknowledged the fact a hero with a connection to the sword is selected to be the Saber servant. Based on that alone, she would absolutely make for the best Saber. Saber is a little, hold on, hold on, my fault, my fault. Altria is a little, uh, she, she a little, she a little arrogant, you know? Not, not arrogant, she a little confident, you know? She's sitting there like, yeah, I am the best, so you're right. <laughs> like, oh my, and then when she was getting mad in the later chapter, not the later, the earlier chapter, when she was getting mad because Ren was saying that she might not, that she might lose the fight, <laughs> she was getting mad. <laughs> Oh my god, I love those moments. Oh shit. I swear I hear this song in somebody's YouTube videos. I don't- is it Berlizzi? Or am I thinking about- No, there's a Dog and Rampa song that sounds similar to this, and I think Berlizzi uses it a lot. Either him or um, Rico. The heroic symbol of Britain. The wielder of a sacred sword, so famous that she's known in this faraway land. But then, what of it? The legend of King Arthur ends with the king's death. Even heroes are still human. The stories usually end in death, but no hero dies a proper death. King Arthur was no exception. If I remember correctly, King Arthur died in battle. At the great battle of Camlin. After unifying Britain and supposedly having no more foreign enemies to defeat, King Arthur was drawn into a conflict with, the unex with an unexpected enemy in the end. It was a treachery of her own army, the knight she vowed to protect and fought alongside for so long that led to King Arthur's death. King Arthur defeated the, the army's leader, but took a fatal wound in the battle, so she entrusted her only surviving knight, Bedivere, with the task of returning the sacred sword to where it belonged. Travel across this bloody battlefield and over the hill. You will find a deep lake, 
throw their sword into that lake. But, be but Bedivere did not fulfill that final duty. Fearing the implications of losing the sword, Bedivere falsely reported not once but twice that he had thrown it into the lake. Each time, King Arthur once more ordered Bedivere to throw the sword away. Finally, on his third attempt, Bedivere was able to fulfill his king's wishes. It is said that King Arthur died after making certain the sword had been returned. Sashiro, what do you plan to do now? Huh. So Sokka suddenly turns to glare at me. Uh, what do you mean plan to do? I'm talking about that dangerous girl sleeping in the Japanese style room right now. I told you to leave her alone, but you insisted on carrying her here. I was right, he did bring Ilya. I also have something to say on the subject. Though she is lost berserker, Iligasville remains a dangerous master. I question your decision to shelter her. Yeah, you should just leave her with Kire. The two glare at me as one. That's right. The moment berserker disappeared, Ilya fainted. She saw no sign of waking up and I couldn't just leave her, so I brought her back home. Of course, Osaka and Saber objected. So I told them to shut the fuck up and I carried her myself. A master who loses her servant either flees before another master kills them or is protected by the church. So Sokka says we should let Kodamine take care of her, but I don't think that priest would take, would take very good care of Ilian. So I'm having her stay in one of our spare rooms. Shiro, your actions here are commendable, but it is dangerous to get involved with Iliasville. It is not too late. We may either send her to the church or seize her command spells. Huh. Saber's serious. Changing her mind won't be easy. You got a problem. We couldn't just leave her alone. Ilya's just a kid and she wasn't herself. I feel bad leaving her with Kodamine. Not that ugly ass. You'd feel bad? How can you say that with a straight face after everything she did to us? I agree. You have too much empathy for Iliasville. She tried to kill you many times. The two are more united than ever, but I need to stand my ground. Ilya was our enemy, but she never had any malice for us. As long as she has a good influence, she won't do any more harm. And I said this at the start. I'm not fighting to kill masters, I'm fighting to end the battle. I know that, but... Saber's tone softens, though she's not though she's clearly not convinced, but Oh yeah. So you're gonna forgive Ilya's bill for everything she's done. Let me tell you something. She's attacked other masters, and you don't know how ma how many masters she might have killed. You're gonna save her even so? Well I Yeah. Ilya admitted she killed Shinji after I let him go. Shinji used Ryder to try to kill everyone at school. If that's what he did as a master, then I suppose his death was inevitable. But Shinji was a friend of mine for years. Thinking of Sakura, I can't just write off what Ilya did. But that means there's no chance at closure. Even if Ilya is no longer a master, as long as she can reflect and feel remorse, I think we should save him. Okay, you might be right. But I, for one, won't ever forgive her what she did to Archer. She killed my archer. We're at an impasse here. We're all freeze, staring at each other. But then... Oh, come on. All seven disappear in the end anyway. If you're so worried about that, you fail as a master, in. The very girl under discussion appears. Yo, you can't be talking like that. Like, I'm, I, I'm trying... I'm trying to keep you from getting your ass beat. But like you, you keep talking like that. I don't know. Like they might jump your ass. Ilya's feet. Hold it. I have no business with you two. I don't have any intention of fighting, so don't get so angry at me. Honestly, I'm embarrassed for you two. Just as fellow ladies, you're older than me, but you're sorely lacking in manners. Ilya shrugs, looking disgusted. Damn. Saber and Tosaka are once again in sync. A whole new kind of intensity comes over them. 
Well, I'm not gonna get into that with you. With I'm not gonna get into that with you. I don't have time to deal with the two of you right now. Ilya turns from them to face me. Ah, uh, Ilya. I would like to thank you, Master of Saber, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being so concerned of me even though I was your enemy. I stare at Ilya in disbelief. So suddenly, so sudden is this that even Saber goes quiet. Tosaka just keeps drinking her milk, giving Ilya the stink eye. And then Ilya smiles that familiar smile of hers. Just kidding! Yeah, you sure are my brother. She launches herself right at me and hugs me around the neck. What's going on? Tosaka spits out her milk. <laughs> Saber's pissed. Oh, what the? I can almost hear the vein popping in Saber's forehead. Unhand him, you insolent fool! Saber rushes toward me. Ilya twists around, swinging to my back. Who's being uncivil here? A servant like you has no right to command me. I have neither obligation nor intent to obey you. If you will speak so brazenly, then you will remove yourself from Shiro's present this instant. I'm not listening to you. Hey, Shiro, let's do the thing we did last night. You gave me a piggyback ride, right? Ilya spins around me. Saber hurries after her trying to catch it. I'm getting dizzy. I'm about to die. Okay. This is bad. What specifically is bad? Well, it's just bad. The two can't stop glaring at each other. It must be because Sasaki is just watching from afar, but... She just wipes the milk off her mouth as if nothing's happening and says... Look, I don't care what you do, but if you keep that up, you're gonna kill him. The two peer curiously at me. It's pretty clear. My neck's getting wrenched around and now I face the greatest danger of my life. Okay, let's review the current situation. The Hamburg steak I've been working so hard on is packed away in the freezer. First there's Tosaka. She's being relatively quiet. She seems to be keeping a straight face, and it looks like she's just going to let the watch things play out. But who can say what she might be thinking to herself? What is it, Shiro? Ilya's sitting next to me, and for some reason she looks like she's in a good mood. She's looking curiously around the living room, but it doesn't look like Saber or Tosaka are much concerned to her. Whatever either of them might say is likely, is likely to go in one ear and out the other. And then it's the one I'm most concerned about. Saber. She's glaring anxiously at both me and Ilya. She's not usually so fidgety and restless. It feels like I'm resting on a bed of nails, so I can't leave things like this. I don't know what's gonna come of this, but I have to do something about the situation. Let's settle this. If we keep this up, it'll drag out until lunch. You're right. We've already come to a conclusion, so we should get rid of the problem as soon as possible. Isn't that right, Saber? That is correct. Ren and I are in agreement, so we should need to convince Shiro. Saber is really digging her heels in. Huh? Shiro, what do Ren and Tosaka want to talk about? Oh, uh, they want to talk about what we should do with you. You lost your server, so we want to know what, your plan, what you plan to do from now on. There's only two obvious options. Either take her to the church for shelter or send her back to her castle in the forest. Her staying out of the her staying here is out of the question. Nigga, this is my fucking house! Who the fuck you talking to? It is my damn house. I decide who stays and who leaves. The fuck? Talk about it's out of the question. I could kick your ass out right now. Dumbass. I send your ass to Code Amine Church. Fucking two fucking twin-tailed bitch. Think she fucking miles tails prower. Do you feel the same way, Shiro? Ilya looks at me, her face emotionless. I 
I wonder if it's a flow chart. Nah. I mean, I say shelter her. Like, I feel like that's gonna be much more fun. I don't think Ilya's gonna do nothing. Let's just shelter her. Kiritsugu always told me to protect girls, and I don't like seeing kids suffer. Oh, well. I think Ilya should stay here. The Holy Grail War isn't over. I want to shelter Ilya until the last of the masters are taken care of. Yeah! If Shiro says so, I'll stay here. That's so adorable! Hey! You're joking me! I can't breathe! I intend to pry off Ilya from me. But before I get a chance, Saber steps over and does it for me. What's with you? You've been getting in my way this whole time. You have some sort of problem with me? Of course I do. I would never forget what you did to Shiro. And you, Shiro. Do you still not understand that nothing good will come from sheltering Iligasville? What about it? Iliga doesn't have a servant anymore, so she's not dangerous. She's no longer a master. Besides, how would you feel if she got attacked after we abandoned her? Ilya's life would be in danger. The other masters might gain power from her. Yes, that might be true, but... Saber hesitates. No matter what she says, Saber understands that another master might attack Ilya if we leave her alone. Then it's my turn to argue. I'm sorry to jump in after you've convinced Saber, but I don't agree. I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch! I don't know why these motherfuckers is freeloading in my crib, thinking that they have a say in what goes on around here. Y'all left y'all cook breakfast for y'all, cause y'all don't do shit else. Except Saber, of course. She, she, you know, she literally defends my life. Fucking freeloader, bro. These freeloaders over here telling me who can and can't stay in my crib. Oh my goodness, the fucking audacity. Look, Shiro, she's still a master. She may have lost her servants, but I also told you that as long as she has command spells, she is still a master. She says that. Tosaka butts in while she sips her tea. Hey, what is that supposed to mean, Tosaka? I'm saying that as long as she has her command spell, she can form a contract with as many servants as she wants. There are stray servants who don't have masters. And as long as a master has the capacity to take in that stray servant, they can form contracts with as many as they want. The fuck? So if there's a capable master around, they can form contracts with as many servants as they want. Not as many as they want. The Holy Grail can only call upon seven heroic spirits, so seven would be the maximum. But no matter how capable a mage is, they couldn't have enough magical power to magical energy to power multiple servants. Even if they did, they would have to divide their own magical energy and have to supply the two servants. That would weaken the servants, which would make forming multiple contracts difficult and pointless. I see. So if I formed a contract with Saber and Berserker, they would have to split my magical energy between them to maintain their existence, which would drastically weaken both of them. That means it would make more sense to keep to, keep to one servant and supply them with magical energy. Now that you mention it, didn't you say servants can change masters? Is that what you mean? Oh, look at you catching on for a change. And you're right, Shiro. That's how servants changing masters go. A servant who's lost their master has some time before disappearing. So if in that time they can find a master who's seeking a servant and form a contract, they'll be fine. Yes, that's why you can't let your guard down around Ren, Shiro. She's still a master too. She might kill you and seize Saber. Or she might form a new contract with another surviving servant. <laughs> yeah, and I could do the exact I could say the exact same thing about you, Ilya. That's never gonna happen. Bitch! I don't intend to teaming up with another servant. My servant is and will only ever be Berserker. I don't know what kind of relationship Ilya and Berserker had. But I do know that servant was special to her. That is a surprise, but at the same time, it makes me happy. I'm happy to know that despite the fact that, she, that, that as a master, Ilya was relentless, she still cherished her partner. Oh, but if Shiro loses, I'll take Saber. I won't let anyone other than Shiro win. But if Shiro loses, I'll win on his behalf. 
Ilya says that proudly, just as she was starting to impress Saber into Osaka. That is ridiculous. I am Shiro's servant. I have no intention of becoming yours. Well, I don't care anyway. I just want Shiro to win. Whether I win or Saber protects Shiro, it's all the same to me. Huh? What a weird thing to say. Actually, if she wants me to win, why would she think like that anyway? And then, Tosaka must have found it strange too. She starts to think. I certainly mind. I will not approve no matter what. Rin, please, warn Shiro yourself. I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Tell him what, Saber? About how we are against sheltering Iliasville here. Oh, that? I guess sheltering her here wouldn't be a terrible idea. <laughs> as soon as Saber's convinced, Rin has to speak up. As soon as Rin's convinced, Saber has to speak up. Oh my goodness, we're going in a circle. Saber freezes. I had advocated for this, and even I'm surprised. I don't blame the opposing Saber for being frozen in shock. Rin, have you lost your mind? No, if I think about this rationally, I see the risks are all the same. It doesn't matter whether we leave Ilya alone or give her shelter here or send her off to the church. It might even work out in our favor if masters come here looking for Ilya. With Saber as she is now, she, it would, she would be hard even for, Ma for multiple servants to defeat if they attack together. That'd be the fastest way to end this Holy Grail war. That's what you want too, isn't it, Saber? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. But if you think you lose to other servants, that's another story. Of course not. You understand my condition perfectly. As long as Shiro is my master, I cannot be defeated. Right. Then that sheltering Ilya isn't a problem. And there's something else. Shiro's decision might have actually been a really smart move. So Sanka goes quiet. She must have convinced Saber, who reluctantly takes a step back from Ilya. Ilya is such a sweetheart. A wise nigga go on Vlad TV. He told on himself. Miss Get Nines and he's learning that dope ain't gonna sell itself. Young Thug should not be free. I mean, I'm chanting free thug because I, you know, I want some good music, but like, he should not be free. Like, legally, he should not be out of there. This nigga deserves to be in jail. We finished breakfast and then moved to the dojo. So, so they, they call this nigga ATL Joker. Why the fuck would they free this nigga, bro? Like, I live in ATL, bro. Like, he was causing havoc. He was causing chaos, bro. We finished breakfast and then moved to the dojo. So Sokka goes back to her own room. While Saber follows me, I'm joking by the way, free thug. As for Ilya, Hey, are you really gonna do some sword training? She follows me to the dojo like we're joined at the hip. I was looking forward to hanging out with you today, Shiro, but Saber's in the way. It's boring here and I'm cold. Well, I'm not surprised Ilya thinks this is boring. Shut the fuck up! I'm not surprised Ilya thinks this is boring. Watching someone train isn't what I'd call exciting. Let's go back to the living room. If you want to get stronger, I'll help you. Ilya takes one of my hands and both of hers and tries to tug me away from the dojo. But at least in this, I can't indulge Ilya. No, I can't, Ilya. I train every day, so I can't miss a day. I'm not going to be a, I'm not a proper maid, so I got to work hard to be ready to fight. Besides, if I can train, I can protect you too, Ilya. I decided to shelter you here, so I should train to help me do just that. Oh, okay. You may be right. But I really don't need you protecting me. You're my brother, so I just need you to be with me. It seems I failed to convince her. Ilya tugs more aggressively at my hand. Saber watches silently all the while. Her eyes burn into the pair of us. She must still not approve of Ilya being here, and is being a little is being more than a little cold toward her. And then our eyes meet. Good timing, I asked for Saber's opinion. I said I can't. 
Tell her, Saber. Tell her I have to train with you every day. There is nothing for me to say. Fuck you. Damn. You you followed it. You are the one who has brought Illigusville here. Persuading her is your duty, not mine. I just a damn command spell. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know why, but I guess she's really ticked now. Oh, you know your place well, Saber. You don't need to train. The ones left are all weak, so you don't need to bother with this. Come on, Shiro. Let, let Saber take care of the other masters and we can just go play outside. Whoa, hey, slow down. I lose my balance and feel myself being tugged toward the dojo's exit. Hey, no. Let go, Ilya. I'm not going to indulge you this time. I'm not skipping my store training. I'm going to stick to it. Sure, you might think it's boring, but I enjoy it. If you're going to complain, then go wait in the living room. I shake her off violently. Fuck off, bitch. She obviously didn't expect me to fling her away like that. Ilya backs off surprised and looks at me nervously. Crap. I should have been nicer about it. Sorry, Ilya. I was too rough with you. I'm not going to give up my sword training, though. I'm sorry to leave you alone, but please try to stay in the living room. Ilya sulks away toward the entrance, but stops by the wall. Fine, I'll watch here. You won't mind that, right? It's so adorable. Oh my goodness. Ilya suddenly roars in defiance. She glares our way, pitching a small tantrum. Uh, well, I don't mind. But it's cold in the dojo. There's tea and snacks in the living room for you. I made up my mind, so it's fine. I'm not gonna leave Shiro and Saber alone here. Ilya huffs and turns her nose up. Oh well. You're more than welcome to go back to the living room if you get bored. At least things have settled down. I take the two Shinai leaning against the wall and turn to face Saber. Then let's begin. It's been three days, so I might be a little rusty. Hey, are you okay, Saber? You look a little dazed. Do you have a fever? Uh, oh, it's nothing like that. Saber turns away from Ilya, furiously shaking her head. So you are alright. Alright, here's your Shinai. Uh, please, simply throw it to me. You mustn't approach me so haphazardly. We are only here to train. That's what I've been saying. What else will we be doing, Saber? A little confused, I toss the Shinai to her. Besides, I've never once landed a strike on Saber. I've never even gotten close enough to be within striking range to her. So Saber telling me not to come close seems odd. Saber takes the Shinai, I toss her a bit awkwardly. Then lets out an audible sigh. Then let's begin. Things may not be the same as before, but please try to maintain your composure, Shiro. Saber glances at Ilya as she speaks. I'll be fine. Once we've started, nothing will bother me. I grip my Shinai and focus on Saber. She stands in front of me, Shinai in hand. Now my attention is fixed only on her. We spend two hours training and go on break as usual. This just reminds me of how amazing you are, Saber. I nod approvingly, then gulp some water from the kettle I brought along. I quench my thirst and wipe the sweat from my neck with a towel, which finally helps me relax. So that was your training? It seems like it was just Shiro getting beat up. Ah, fuck. Ilya is so blunt about things that most people would find awkward. That's not true, Ilya. It may have looked like I was just getting beat up, but it was actually worse before. In fact, I didn't even pass out once. So I say I did pretty well today. Wah! Oh, really? But does that have anything to do with your skills, Shiro? From where I was sitting, it looked like Saber ignored plenty of opportunities to attack you. Ilya's expression turns thoughtful. She's sharp. I found it odd too, actually. Either Saber was holding back out of concern from me or she isn't in top form. Whatever the case, Saber didn't go all out. Well, she may not always be able to fight, she may not always fight seriously while we're training, but she's always been merciless about exploiting openings before. Why did my door just do that? 
Why did my door just do that? Got ghosts and shit, bro. This is some bullshit. I'm about sick of I'm about sick of these guys. I shouldn't have been fucking playing courts party yesterday. Damn it. This is what I get. Today she likes drive though. Normally she just rushes in and attacks hard enough to knock me out. But there was none of that today. You think so too, Ilya? Maybe Saber's giving up on me. I wouldn't blame her. I didn't see it that way. But whenever Saber readjusted her grip on the Shinai to execute a follow-up blow, she just stopped and stepped back. I'm not sure why she did that. It wasn't like she was unwilling to attack, but more like she was scared. Or trying to hold back. Aw, uh, Saber's a sweetheart. She doesn't want to hurt us. Yo! Stop that shit! Hey! Hey, Sachiko! Stop fucking with my damn door! You about to piss me off! I sent Yoshi to get your ass. Nigga, I, I, I sent I send Yanagahori to get your ass. Huh? Saber would never hold back. If she had the compassion for that, she wouldn't have beat me so bad that first day. Yeah, Saber isn't the type to hold back in training. That's why I was able to focus so completely on her weapon. What's gotten into Saber? She's in training at all. It seems unbelievable, but... Did she go easy on me? No, I did not go easy on you. Bold face lie. Oh my goodness. Just a straight bold face lie. Look me dead in my face and just told a fucking lie. Oh my goodness, bro. I was simply imagining myself facing off against a swordsman somewhat more skilled than Shiro as usual. Something's not right. Saber has to see it too. Yeah, I can't imagine you ever taking it easy on me and I know you were being serious. But I think you are holding back. If you don't come right at me, this is pointless. R right at you? But that would mean I would be getting too close to Master. Depending on what happens, our, our bodies might come into ta contact. Huh? Well, we're sparring, so I guess we might bump shoulders or something. Besides, you used to slow your whole damn body into mine and knock me down because I wasn't defending myself well enough. And close combat is your specialty, Saber. Uh, did I do that sort of thing? It's kind of a weird question, but yeah, frequently. Remember how you slammed me into the wall when we first sparred? I said you were pretty strong for a girl and you said it was natural for a swordsman. And then you violently made out with me. I wish! Saber stands there dumbfounded. What's going on? Saber's acting really weird today. I hate to learn that she isn't feeling well. I should talk to Sokka later. We get back to our training, but it's still different than before. But after just a few strikes, Saber sets down a Shinai. Hmm? Is this a new kind of training? She might strike me straight in the head the moment I drop my guard and get close. I breathe hard, watching Saber cautiously. Saber no narrows her eyes, showing that she is serious now, but steps forward. Let us have lunch. That's not like her. Huh? huh? I lower my shinai. Lunch? Is it that time already? According to the clock, it's a bit before noon. It's lunchtime for sure, but this is the first time Saber's been the one to step up and suggest it. Neither Saber nor I paid much attention to the time when we trained before. We take a break, then notice we were hungry, then we check the clock and see if it was about lunchtime. It's a good idea. I could go along with it easily enough. No can do. We'll be fasting today. Oh my goodness. Let's see the flow chart. Fine, but why is she on the dot today? I'm a, I'm just gonna pick what I think would be a would be funnier. Why is she on the dot today? This is this this is gonna be a silly one. This is going to trigger a silly result. Yeah, Ilya's here too, so let's have lunch early today. I agree to Saber's suggestion and lower my shin eye, and then Saber's shoulders sag in relief. What's really going on? Saber's acting so weird. 
Maybe I should at least ask why. What a relief. Then let us all head to the living room. Shiro's cooking is delicious, but it takes a while to prepare. Huh? You think the time I spend working on lunch is wasted time? I guess I should have made bento for lunch every day. That would have been much easier and less time consuming. I wouldn't have to be in the kitchen every time either. I put all that I put all that work in the lunch as a way of thanking her. But if Sebi doesn't like me spending so much time on that, so be it. Shira, what are you doing? Let us head to the living room. What? Oh yeah, lunch, right. I leaned my shin eye against the wall and set three cushions on the floor. Yes, lunch. We will be taking a break afterwards, but we will have a problem if you do not head to the kitchen right away. Why? We don't need to go back to the living room. And we don't need to rush. What, what would be the problem? What's going on? <laughs> Saber stopped so suddenly, I can practically hear Greer's grinding. And how come today of all days? You're so insistent on stopping time. What's gotten you in such a hurry? No, it's not that I'm in a hurry, but... Then we can enjoy a nice leisurely lunch as we have time. Um, well, that may be true, but... Anyway, we must move to the living room. If we do not eat lunch, it will affect our afternoon training. As I said, I already prepared it. If you've got the time, then you can go into the living room and bring the bento I made this morning. Huh, bento? I nod as I open the windows to let in the cool air. And then, our stone, that is not a fucking growl. That is an alien, that is an alien fucking radio receiver. All right, we're, we always let our stomachs growling be our meal alarm. No wonder it seemed weird. I turned to Saber. Huh? What's wrong, Saber? Opening the window make it too cold? We should at least ventilate the room since we're eating here, though. No, it is nothing. Did you say lunch is in the living room? Saber dashes out of the dojo. The fuck is her problem? Saber's half-hearted hits the way she's acting now. Maybe she does have a fever. Here comes, there, there goes Shiro, the, the, the dense motherfucker. It's noon and we eat lunch. I made a hearty breakfast, a lunch's box leftovers. I see. You have taken the. I see. You have taken the dishes from this morning and put them between slices of bread. Sebra nods her approval as she eats her sandwich. The way she uses a paper napkin to keep her hands from getting dirty. There's so much grace even in the way she eats a bento. Yeah, I realize it's during breakfast. You're a good cook, Shiro. It's nice that the food is so good. On the other end of the spectrum, Ilya eagerly crams her sandwich into her mouth. I can't tell if she's just playing around or copying me. Ilya seems to have better manners and savor, except at the table. Hold it, Ilyasville. If you do it like if you eat like that, your hair will get dirty. Oh, that's so adorable! That's so adorable! Ilya must have had butter smeared on the corner of her mouth or something. Saber leans in reluctantly, wiping off whatever it is. Thanks, but what's the big idea? Because you didn't like me, Saber. I am wary of you, yes, but even I understand people's feelings. You have no hostility and Shira has accepted you as a guest. That is why I will show you the bare minimum of courtesy. And besides... Besides... Your hair is beautiful. It pains me to see it getting so dirty. Shiro's still mine, you know. Well, I can maybe consider being a little friendly with you. I can make Shiro win, but I can't protect them after all. Ilya shrugs and takes another bite of her sandwich. You do not need to remind me. It is the duty of a servant to be their master's shield. Saber responds plainly enough as they eat. Their conversation hasn't changed much, but at least they sound calmer. After we relax after finishing our meal, Tosaka comes in. 
Shira, are you here? I'm ready, so come by as soon as you can. Her message delivered. Tosaka heads straight back to the outbuilding. All right. Tosaka's going to teach me magecraft in the afternoon. Never had a proper teacher, so Tosaka's magecraft lectures have been really helpful. She seems to be willing to keep teaching, so I should clean up here quickly and head over to her. Sorry, but I'm going to head to Tosaka's room. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, so you two should go back to your rooms and rest. Okay, I'm a little tired, so I'll take a nap. Ilya walks out of the dojo, rubbing her sleepy eyes. That's a relief. As long as Ilya goes to sleep, I don't think there's going to be any problem with me going to Tosaka's room. Shiro, are you going to go to Rin's room? Are you fucking deaf? Short-term memory, bitch? Yes, I just said that. Tosaka's teaching me the basics of magecraft. Is that really necessary? With Berserker gone, there are no more enemies that require our, al our alliance to defeat. Would that not mean that there's nothing more for you to learn from Rin? She might be right. Tosaka's lessons were originally meant to keep help me uh, uh, help me when we went up against Berserker. So with him gone, there's really no reason for her to teach me anything else. No, Berserker or not, I do still want to learn from her. There's still so much I don't know as a mage, and I'd like to fix that as soon as I can. I see. If you insist, then I have no business stopping you. Huh? Sabre looks sullen as she says this. Nigga, give her a hug. She needs it. She just wants a hug, bro. Okay, time to start my first lesson. First, though, is anything broken? That's how she began. It's kind of an odd question to ask the moment I arrive. Huh? Broken like what? I'm asking if any part of you isn't working. You did some wild stuff, so you might have burned out a nerve or two. Not to say I care. I just figured it'd be hard to teach you unless I knew whether there was anything wrong. According to Dosaka, some parts of me should be numb. But since I'm the, I'm the one living in my body, I can say she's wrong. No, everything's working fine. The headache and fever are gone now that I've got a, had a night's sleep. I feel fine. What? That can't be true. Did you forget the part where you projected Saber Sword? That would have cost a normal person their arm. But I told you I'm fine. Fuck, like, come on now. Don't make it a big deal, bitch. Besides, if my body wasn't working, I wouldn't have been able to carry Ilya back to the house. And at that point, the only thing wrong with me was a headache and a fever. But that's not possible. Shiro, show me your arm. She tugs on my arm before I can reply and stares at it. I realize I'm holding my breath. I may have gotten used to her being around, but I'm definitely not used to her being so close. It really does look like there's nothing wrong. I see a few places that are black, like they're burned or bruised. But other than that, everything's healed. It's almost like the flesh grew back like new. Hosaka mutters quietly to herself as she inspects my arm. Hey! As if that weren't enough to leave me be beat red. Your body really is unbelievable. This isn't how normal healing works. Your natural healing is obviously being bolstered by something external, but... This, you healed this yourself. Rin lifts up my sleeve, pressing her fingers all along my arm. Oh. Hey, stop, that's enough, Tosaka. Go sit back down if you're done. I'm examining you, you know? Oh, I get it. Tosaka leans closer to me. You say your fever's gone, but I'm not so sure. Your face is glowing. That's for me to worry about. It's none of your business, so leave me alone. Oh, really? Then I guess me doing this won't be a problem, right? Uh, what? Don't put your hand on my forehead. I don't have a fever, so there's no point to this. Apparently not. Even your ears are red now. You don't look like you have a fever. It looks more like you're drunk. She's doing this on purpose. This is deliberate, I know it. 
Kosaka, you know what the fuck you're doing, don't you? You got me! I was just enjoying your reactions, too funny. Anyone who would toy with a man's innocent feelings like that should do the repentance in hell. Well, I'll stop teasing here. If I push it, I might end up having to suffer the consequences. That's a problem. I feel like Tosaka is only teasing me harder now. Tosaka, might I remind you that this is serious and I'm here to learn from you? Oh, I'm sorry. That's been my intention from the start. I was only checking on my students' health just now. Oh, yeah. Then are you going to get to the day's topic then? Yes, I suppose so. We're stepping outside my specialty here so I can only offer advice. But it's better than if I didn't say anything at all. To be honest, that last lesson I gave you was probably the last of the help I can offer. You can't just learn to be a mage in a few lessons. All I did was install a switch inside you that you hadn't learned to use. You know that much at least, right? You mean that jewel? Ever since I swallowed it, I've been able to turn my magic circuits on and off without creating the scratch every time. <coughs> oh man. Yep, that was about the only thing I could teach you in such a short time. But even that was just your previous training asserting itself. I can only boost the magecraft you've already learned. I'm not going to teach you any other forms of magecraft. You just don't have the talent. Yeah, you being so blunt about, it, about that is enlightening. But you're going to at least give me some advice about the magecraft that I can use, right? So tell me what kind of magecraft I used last night. So Sokka doesn't answer. She's just glaring at me like I'm the worst enemy. Uh, to Tosaka, uh, this is supposed to be a lecture, right? I get nervous when you go all quiet like that. She looks away, frowning. It's only a brief flicker of, ex of her expression, though. I can't. I can't do projection magecraft, and I can't teach someone something I don't know how to do. Huh? Something you can't do? Wasn't what I used against Berserker pretty basic for a mage? I'm just imagining the structure and let my magical energy flow into it. It's no different than strengthening Matraff. But flooding your own magical energy into something that's already formed is difficult. It's like adding what you think is red to an existing mixture of paints to draw out a red hue, only to end up with some completely different color. By comparison, it's much easier to work with my own paint from the very beginning. I can just draw whatever I want that way. What do you mean you can't do it? I'm sure you can do that that kind of thing. It's much easier than strengthening. You know, if you said that to any other maze, they definitely kill you. What you did was called projection, and you perfectly replicated a noble phantasm. I've never heard of anyone doing that before. A chill runs down my spine. Oh, shit. It's not my imagination. Sosaka is actually angry. It doesn't matter. I had a feeling this was the case when I saw the junk in your shed. There's no point in being mad about you at this stage. Let me explain because you're clearly confused. What you just did was, what you just did was called projection magecraft. It's an imperfect magecraft that creates mere images of existing artwork or famed swords using your own magical energy. It's generally used to create temporary objects to be used as stand-ins for rituals. Things you create from images in your mind are understood to be imaginary objects, so they disappear quickly. Huh? I get that they're replicas created from a mental image. I saw Saber Sword in my dream and I imagined the Golden Sword based on it. I don't really get it. Magical energy is like clay, right? Reproduction or no, what you make shouldn't disappear once the object takes form, right? That's not possible! Magical energy can only exist within your body. That's why you pass magical energy through yourself. You need you need to you need to interact with nature. Sure, I can need magical energy like a soft piece of candy to at least make a dagger. But it stops there. It's nothing more than candy in the shape of a dagger. As soon as the magical energy dissipates, the dagger disappears too. Listen, 
Thanks made from pure, made purely from magical energy do not last long. They only briefly take shape. Well, but projection magic creates an object that looks and performs like the original. She's right, magical energy has no shape. I can feel it while it's flowing through my body. Once it leaves, it thins out and eventually disappears entirely. But then, no matter how many blueprints I make in my mind and form with magical energy, everything will fade because it's made from magical energy. Now that I think about it, when Kiri Suga was teaching me magecraft, I showed him my half-assed attempt at projection, but he told me to stick to strength in it because what I was doing instead was inefficient. I see. So projection consumes a lot of magical energy, and there's no point in using it because what you make disappears immediately. Exactly. For example, let's say you use a decent amount of magical energy to create a sword. All that energy you use might get you a sword whose power we'd rate at maybe three or four. A human's imagination is unreliable, filled with holes, so it's impossible to replicate anything accurately. Now let's say you use the same magical energy to strengthen the sword. That same amount of magical energy can make a sword 20 to 30 times stronger, which means it would last a hundred times longer than anything you make with create projection. Got it? Projection magecraft is only used for rituals. Its sole use is creating replicas, which disappear the moment they're used. And then only as a substitute for tools you can't normally create or get a hold of. Your father made the right call teaching you strengthening. You, you, have, you have only so many magic circuits to begin with, so if he taught you something as wasteful as projection, he'd be no more than an amateur himself. I got that. But what was that then? The golden sword I imagined was real for a moment. It didn't even have the real sword's power. Was it just a freak accident that I projected Saber's sword then? Now that I think about it, the amount of magical energy in that sword was remarkable. Replicating something like that ends up with a few hundred times the magical energy I myself have does seem weird. That, um, you have an affinity for swords. Mages all have connections to something. For you, it's clearly swords. Connections? You mean elements like fire or water? Right. Normally a person takes one of the elements that makes up this world. The Mages Association considers fire to be normal, wind to be noble. It could be earth, water, fire, wind, or ether. It could even be wood, fire, soil, metal, or water. A mage has a connection to one of these, but there are also those with more specific connections. Most of these mages don't see any time in the spotlight. They're considered unusual. So in your case, you're connected with swords. It's pretty specific, but that means you could be the authority in swords. I see. That's probably true. I've always been fascinated with swords. Now I'm curious about Tosaka's specialty. Knowing her is probably fire or wind or something else that suits someone like her. But I should probably just ask as I'm curious. Hey Tosaka, I'm curious. What's your specialty? Mine? My connection is with the five elements. Um, she means all of them? Anyway, that's pretty much that. They say that projection is about as useful as images on a screen, so try not to use it too much. Besides, trying to replicate Saber's sword was suicidal. You made it work this time, but I wouldn't have been surprised if you just exploded. Nigga, he did it three fucking times! I don't know, bro! This might be his bag. You said it yourself. Saber sword is more magical energy than you ever could. You do realize you're creating something like th that. Creating something like that goes way beyond the limits of your circuits, right? Yeah, I know. But it's not so easy to go go beyond your own limits, right? I thought I couldn't go any further anyway. I was already at my limit to begin with. Oh, you absolutely can. And death is always lurking right around that corner. If Magecraft follows a certain form or format, it means any maze can use any Magecraft they have knowledge of. Even if, they are, even if they're not ever actually able to pull off that miracle, they'll still take a shot. Mages are only a source of power. Even a small ninja can reach high speed if you push the gas hard enough, but it tends to be self-destructive. 
Same with mages. If they're willing to risk the risk, if they're willing to accept the risk of destroying themselves, mages can certainly push past their limits. Doing so burns magic circuits and shreds nerves. But if they keep going, they can reach the miracle they seek. Your projection is just that. Your body felt feverish after the battle because your nerves were seared. That's the price you pay for magecraft go for pay for magecraft beyond your own means. What you did could easily have cost you a limb or two. So Sokka's voice grows a little louder, but at the same time, that's why you should always keep in mind, practicing magecraft that goes beyond the caster's limit only leads to ruin. Promise me you won't project Saber Sword ever again. Tosaka is genuinely worried about me. No promises, though. After her warning, Tosaka prescribed some medicine I'm not familiar with. Well, there's probably no point in telling you not to push yourself. At least for our peace of mind, take that painkiller if anything happens. If all goes well, your bruised and discolored skin should heal. Tosaka explains that she prepared some kind of green powdery medicine. I drink it with some tea. So Sokka rummages through her stuff and tries to prescribe other medicine. Anyway, I feel bad for Osaka having to go through all this stuff for me. But I feel like I'm just wasting t time sitting here. I should... I I'm curious about what this means. Now that I think about it, there's one thing I don't understand. Why wasn't Tosaka crushed during our battle with Berserker? What sort of trickery did she use? Hey Tosaka, can I ask you something that happened yesterday? I was actually wondering that too. Cause I saw her getting crushed and I'm like, yo, Berserker, like you really could just, like, like how are you having trouble? Can I ask you about something that happened yesterday? What is it? Make it quick, I'm busy. Okay, so Berserker grabbed you. I'm just wondering how you survived. You don't look it, but do you work your abs or something? If Rip were abs were all I needed to survive Berserker's grip, my stomach would be harder than steel. Sorry, that was the wrong way to ask. I apologize, so please stop grinning at me like that. And stop provoking me! As to say how I survived, I placed a jewel on my stomach before the fight. I snuck it into my clothes to create a protective barrier around me, got it? I see. So you expected Berserker to grab you from the get-go. Makes sense then, planning to protect yourself. But that means your jewels. I'm all tapped out. I use one for Saber, three to distract Berserker, five to blow his face off, and one to protect myself. Ten years I spent saving those up, and they all went in an instant. I keep fucking up. I keep fucking up. Went in an instant. Even after using most of them, I still couldn't defeat Berserker. In spite of her dejected side, Tosaka doesn't seem to regret- Shut the fuck up while I'm talking! Damn! In spite of her dejected side, Tosaka doesn't seem to regret what happened. What's done is done. She knows very well not to dwell on what she lost, but to focus on what she gained in exchange. I see. Sorry about that, Tosaka. Thanks, but I'm gonna learn from this and make gems that'll let me defeat an enemy like that all on my own. She's as blunt as ever about that, but I'm also sure she'll manage it. And then I realize, so Sok is the reason we won against Berserker. Yeah? I mean, you know, everybody is the reason why. Everybody had a big hand in it. And after giving me several medications, so Sokka instructs me to do simple strengthening exercises while, I, while we keep an eye on how my body reacts. Apparently she's checking to see that nothing goes wrong inside me when I use magical energy. Honestly, so Sokka seems more like a doctor than a teacher today. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any problems. You probably won't need to come here tomorrow then. Huh? That's a bit of a surprise. I don't have to come tomorrow, that means... Yeah, but there's nothing else I can teach you. If you want to focus on learning Magecraft, you should do it after the war. Besides, with Archer gone, my alliance with you is long over. I suddenly realized our alliance was only so we could defeat Berserker. Now that Berserker is gone and Tosaka doesn't have a servant anymore, our living arrangement should be over. Should have ended yesterday even. 
So, what are you gonna do now, Tosaka? Are you gonna go to Kodamine's place? That'd probably be the normal thing to do. Tosaka and Father Kodamine are student and disciple, so it shouldn't be an issue for her to go asking him for protection. Why? Of course I'm not going there. I haven't lost yet. There's no reason I can't fight without a servant. Besides, running away isn't really my style. I decided to fight, so I'm seeing this through to the end. She says this like it should be the most obvious thing in the world. And she's proud about that. My eyes widen. Well, okay, maybe not. I should have expected this from Sosaka. She's unbelievably stubborn. Absolutely selfish. And captivatingly brilliant. Then what are you going to do? Are you going to go out on your own now? There are still servants and masters left. Let's see. I think I'll stay here a while to gather information. I should reserve my research on Ryudo Temple too. You're going to stay here? Are you sure? It'd be a big help if you stayed, but our alliance ended, so... What are you talking about? We managed to, to beat Berserker thanks to Archer. Our alliance may have ended, but you still owe me. And that's why you're obviously going to let me use your place until you fully repaid your debt. Besides, I said I would take responsibility until the end. You and I were teacher and student, even if it was brief, so I'd be worried if I left you to your own devices. I wouldn't be able to concentrate on the war. Alright. Feels like a lifetime ago, so I've nearly forgotten. But I've admired Ren because of exactly those qualities for a long time now. So I'm actually very happy. That's a Tosaka I've always known and liked. Besides, if I ever saw the day a girl as stubborn as her gives up, I wouldn't know what to believe from then on. Yeah, thanks for sticking around, Tosaka. Whatever else I might say, I know I would I know what I, I wouldn't know what to do without you. Saber and I need you. That's fine, but don't say stuff like that. You're stupidly honest. Yeah, but be careful about what you say. You can give people the wrong idea. Huh? I'm not sure why that upset Tosaka so much. Tosaka, what do you mean I might give people the wrong idea? Unbelievable. It just wasn't a, it just wasn't appropriate, okay? And my whole attitude should make clear I don't want you asking, so drop it. Tosaka must be aware of some secret rule I'm not. Good grief. I feel bad. Saber's got it tough. But then again, that's probably why you two work. You and Saber both have to be pretty freaking dense or else you never last. Okay, I still don't get it, but I didn't miss what you said about feeling bad for Saber. What do you mean she has it tough? This is exactly what I'm talking about. I bet you haven't even noticed the changes in Saber. Changes in Saber? It's not about her appearance, right? If anything, would have changed in Saber. Oh right, she has been acting weird since this morning. No, I just thought she was in a bad mood since because Ilya was with us. She just sat there all stiff and quiet. When I asked if something was wrong, she just got up and left saying something about having a dream. I pretty much forgot about it and all the hustle and bustle over Ilya. Yeah, Sibyl's been pretty off since this morning, like her head somewhere else. Saber says she had a dream? Huh? That's the bit that surprises you? And now she's ignoring me. Hey, don't go quiet on me. That face you're making has me nervous. Oh, it's nothing major. It's just save servants don't typically dream. Huh? Servants don't dream? That's right, servants don't dream. But if she says she did, then it wasn't a dream, it was someone's memory. Maybe Tosaka's experienced it before. The coldness in her voice runs so counter to her usual cheerfulness, cheerless cheerfulness. And now it's time to prepare dinner. With so much happening these past few days, I thought the whole cooking rotation had gone out the window, but then... I'll leave dinner to you tonight. Looks like it's gonna be a cold night. 
Between that and Ilya being here, maybe you can make stew. She steps out of her room as she speaks. Well, yeah, I guess stew would be perfect for Ilya. Maybe it's that maybe it's the hat and coat she wears that makes me think that. Whatever the case, I don't have a problem making stew for dinner. I know expert at Western dishes like stew, but I don't think I can really mess something like that up. Oh, but before that, it's a little bit before six o'clock. Still have some time before I need to cook. We had training, so I'd done my share of sweating today. She's like, now would be a good time to take a bath. Taking a bath before dinner might be a hassle, but Tosaka and Sibu usually do it before dinner. It'll be pretty late by the time it was my turn. Hallway is cold. The heaters have rooms nice and warm, but once I'm out in the hallway, I can feel the wintry chill. For Yuki's winters are typically warm. And the weather's been screwy these past few days. Speaking of cold, it looks like it just snowed. Must not have noticed because it only lasted for less than an hour and didn't snow a large amount. If there had been much snow on the ground, my yard would have been packed would be packed with an army of snowmen, which really sucks to clean up. In that case, I'm glad it didn't snow much. Of course, a snowman army will, will be the work of a single person. I can't help but smile as I remember when it snowed last year, her cold reddened hands gripping the lectern. Huh? I was thinking of taking a shower, but the bathroom was already warm. Hold on. Hold on. There's something moving in the water. I strained my eyes trying to see the bathtub through the haze of the steam. Hold on. Let's go! This is what I like to see! My mind goes blank as the white sheets of steam fill in the bathroom. Burn this into your eyes! Woo! My throat closes up. I can't get a word out. My brain stops working. I'm paralyzed. But in the back of my mind, I recall something similar happening. Actually, the same thing has already happened. Last time I was dressed and Saber wasn't. Not this time. Uh, Saber. The only sound is my own loud gulping. Saber just freezes, watching me as I stand there. Dumb. What is this Sonic.exe ass music, bro? <laughs> Bruh. She's gonna get mad. Here it comes. I'm gonna die. Her soft lips begin to tremble. Any second now, she's gonna start yelling. Sorry, it's my fault. I was gonna use a shower. Well, I, I didn't think anybody would be using a bathroom at this hour, but yeah, I should have figured it out earlier, but I ramble a lot of lame-ass excuses as I step backward, trying to head back to the changing room. It it's not as that it's not all that it's not that I'm gawking at Saber. I am. I am. But for some reason I feel like I'm making a mad dash. Feel like making a mad dash to the changing room, which just makes Saber angrier. Truth of the matter is, I cannot take my eyes off her. Fuck. I remember the night in the ruins. I recall Saber's warmth, how close it was. Her body was so frail and slender. The heat of our bodies, even our heartbeats mingled, overlapped. At the time, I was just desperate to fix the problem. But now it all feels so tempting. Anyway, we could talk later. I try to reach behind me for the exit, and then... My apologies, Shiro. I do know this is a selfish request, but would you mind leaving right now? Saber averts her gaze, her voice oddly muffled. No, I really don't know what to think. I'm not sure why Saber isn't mad. Seeing how embarrassed she looks causes my blood to pound in my skull. Why? The words come out before I can stop myself. Saber looks down more apologetically. Please, wait a little longer to use a shower. Please permit me to use this space alone for the time being. Saber shrinks in on herself, hiding her body. And then I suddenly remember. When I ran into her in the changing room last time, Saber didn't say anything. Sex is not matter for servants. She said that appearances hadn't mattered to her. Oh, 
Uh, well, you, you see, uh, hold on. I can't find this. I can't find the right words. My head's spinning. Ah, uh, come on, work brain. So you're not mad, Saber? There, there's nothing wrong with you wanting to wash yourself. I have no right to limit my master's activities. I get it. Saber doesn't care what she looks like or whether she has clothes on or not. That's why it's not weird for me to be here. She is obviously fronting. The bathroom is a place to wash one's body, so my presence isn't strange. It doesn't matter whether Saber's here or not. Knowing that helps, but I have a feeling I'm wrong. So then, I don't think it would be a problem if I used the shower right now, you know? But I am saying, well, I am not concerned about being seen, but my body is not that of a younger girl like Rin. So, she blushes even more, tripping over her words. Hold on, bro. Hold on. I need, I'm about to start salivating. Hold on. Hold on. I feel like a, I feel, I feel like a, a dog, like. <laughs> Hold on. Stop. I do not want you to see too much of me. A man like you must find such a muscular body as mine unsightly. No! She sounds so bashful. No! I disagree. I almost faint for just so, so many reasons. You fool! I would never think... I would never think that. Tamber's body is a long, long way from unsightly. Nigga, I want this shit in my sight 24-7. She's saying she's rugged, but that's never bothered me. Sure, she's more muscular than Tosaka, but I like that. Like, let me grate cheese on them abs, bitch. But still, I still think I, I still think Saber is very feminine. Shiro, um, that is why I would like you to leave me alone here. I want to play finger skateboard on your abdomen, bro. Like, use the fucking like use each individual muscle. As like a mini ramp, bro. I don't know how I responded. I only remember nodding slightly and pulling the door closed. Love to see it. I love to see it. I definitely love to see it. And so the day ends. Dinner was chaotic. Ilya got chattier with each meal. And she and Tosaka have gotten to this weird point where I'm not sure if they're fighting or being friendly. Saber has accepted Ilya's presence here, but she hasn't warmed up to her. More than that, Saber gets pretty frowny whenever Ilya gets near me. Just jealous of a little girl is crazy. These past few days have just been plain rough. The normal routine of just a few days ago has devolved into complete chaos. I step out, I silently step out into the yard. Just about time for the calendar to roll over to the next day. I walk beneath the pale light of the moon, leaving faint puffs of white breath in my wake. Next thing I know, I'm at work on my daily routine. I don't really need to train out here since Osaka's teaching me, but I still sit on the cold ground and check on the things I've been working on for so long. I'm not doing this because I'm worried about my skills. It's more that I'm doing it the I'm doing it. I find what I'm doing. I find doing it soothing. I've been doing this for years, so just not doing it would feel weird. I put even more effort into tonight's training. So Sokka told me not to do it anymore, but I can't just do what she says. If I can master this projection thing, it'd mean I could be a lot more helpful to Saber. And the heat from earlier is still lingering within me. The night at the ruins. The battle in the forest and the morning mist. The golden sword I created. The residual heat still lingers in my hands, but deep down, I find myself hoping I'll be able to reignite those flames. So sorry. Creation philosophy appraisal. It's easy to recreate. At the time, I was so desperate that my mind was in a jumble, but now I can retrace the necessary steps and form my incantation. No, 
From the very beginning, there has only been a single thing that could serve as a trigger for me. The pronunciation is the same. But just by changing my perception of how it's said, it will become something entirely mine, my own original spell. Basic structure, hypothesis. I know very well how dangerous this is, so Saki doesn't need to remind me. I really have no business getting anywhere near projection magecraft. It's completely beyond me. Venturing so brazenly into dangerous waters can only lead to death. End of hypothesis. Now instant nothingness. I erase the blueprint that was in my head. A shadow falls across the door. Saber comes in, her frame blotted out, blotted out the light of the moon. Good, you are here, Shiro. I could not find you and I was worried something might have happened. Huh? No, nothing happened. I couldn't sleep so I came in to do some mental exercises. Once I finish, I'll head back to my room so you don't need to worry. I see. That is fine then. Saber focuses on my forehead. She can probably see that I'm dripping with sweat. It's always like this, don't worry. Mages have to practice their magecraft. And well, failure comes with the territory for an amateur like me. I wiped the sweat from my brow with the back of a hand. Oh, I'm surprised. My sweat is cold as ice. I thought it was cold, but I don't remember the shed being quite this cold. Shiro, have you been doing this every day? Well, yeah, as much as I possibly could. It's a daily routine my old man taught me, so I should at least keep to it. As soon as I finish speaking, I regret my bluff. I regret telling her this is my daily routine. My intent was to boast to Saber. At the end of the day, my training isn't just some chore to me. But it isn't the easiest of tasks either. Saber says nothing. The moon hangs behind her, its light spilling around her frame. The shed plunged into bluish darkness is eliminated, illuminated by the few shafts of silvery light that make it past Saber. I recall the first night I met her. Saber, Tosaka said something to me today. That moment just felt like a dream. Is it true that servants don't dream? I can't stop myself from asking. That is correct. We do not have dreams. Servants are spiritual forms, and so, and so do not sleep to begin with. I am forced to sleep because I cannot turn into a spirit. Into, turn, fuck. I am forced to sleep because I cannot turn into spiritual form, but I still do not dream. But this morning you said... There's a brief silence. She closes her eyes, apparently having made up her mind. The dream I had, Shiro, was yours. Master and servant are mentally connected. If the connection becomes strong enough, there are times they will experience each other's memories. You dreamed of my past? Yes. It is tantamount to stepping into your mind, but I was not able to prevent it from happening. Please forgive me for that, Shiro. Don't. I did the same thing, Saber's past. I've seen several scenes from her life before she became a servant now. Don't be silly, that's not your fault. You can't help what you dream about. And I have to apologize too. My past is pretty boring. Seeing something like seeing something that boring probably makes you not want to have sleep. No. This morning was the first such dream I had. I did not see anything recent, so I did not infringe on your privacy as a young man. Saber is dead serious about that warning, but privacy, well, yeah, sure, I've done my share of dumb things. That's a relief. But if you're saying you didn't see any recent memories, then how far into the past have you seen? There was a large fire. That is all I saw. Her voice is quiet. Her gentle gaze tells me what she saw. Oh. That dream. I see. Well, I don't know what to say. Should I say it was unfortunate? It's like going to a movie theater expecting to see a movie you know, but then you somehow end up in the wrong theater and end up getting a completely different show. 
It helped me to understand. No. I have been thinking this for some time now, but you have a dangerous side to you. What do you mean, dangerous? Well, yeah, I'm sure the odds are plenty stacked against me from your point of view. That is not what I mean. You're very similar to me. That is why I can understand your mistakes. I can see what might happen to you if you continue on this path. Uh, I don't think I've made any mistakes. Sure, I've failed plenty of times. My goal is to be a champion of justice like my old man. A goal like that can't be a mistake, no way. I am telling you that is your mistake. Shiro, what happened on that day was not your fault. You cannot and should not take responsibility for it. There is nothing you need to redeem yourself for. That's obvious. It was just an accident and I was just a victim. Sure, I may be dealing with survivor's guilt. Rin once said that your self-sacrifice and devotion are bizarre and I agree. You are not sacrificing your life to save others. In fact, at no point that you even consider your own life. Maybe my pupils have dilated. I'm not sure why, but I can't seem to focus on Saber's face. I love the parallel here, because think about it, right? Think about it. Shiro sees Saber fighting, and it just pisses him off how she has no regard for her own life. Saber sees into his, sees into his past, and then everything that Shiro does becomes, uh, she understands it now. And now she's uh, kind of ups and now she's upset that he has no regard for his own life. Like they're both upset at each other for the same reason, but they're hypocritical. But they're being hypocritical because the very thing that they're mad at each other about is literally what they in one way or another pride themselves on. Or maybe not pride themselves on. Maybe don't they maybe don't think that deep into it. But that's what that's how they move at every turn. And you know, I I love parallels. I love parallels. That's a cool parallel. Oh. You will never be able to forget that accident, but as long as you remember it, you cannot change. Is that not extremely painful for you? Painful for me? Well, yeah, that's painful. Saber doesn't have to remind me of that. It is obvious. So many people died, it was absolute hell. Something like that causing you pain is only natural. And besides, if I didn't feel that, it might be all meaningless. Yeah, you're right. It is painful to remember. But it's in the past now, there's nothing I can do about it. Seba doesn't answer. Instead, she claws at her arm in frustration. I must obtain the Holy Grail. But that also applies to you, Shiro. Saber? You require the Holy Grail. You summoning me was ultimately inevitable, Master. I don't understand how to respond to that. I'm going to go to bed. Please, do not strain yourself over much. Saber leaves. I fold my arms and think. Do I need the Holy Grail? A vessel that grants wishes to its possessor? A vessel which contains unlimited quantities of magical energy? For which it said nothing is impossible? Were I to get it, it could easily grant my wish. No, that's wrong. No matter how I look at it, I don't need the Holy Grail. No, I definitely don't need it. Because I don't have any wishes that can come true, or hope for anything impossible. I wouldn't have a dream if it weren't something I could attain myself. The night grows darker. In the familiar old shed lit only by the moon, I, feel, I, can, I listen to the distant wind. Hard. Hard. W chapter. W chapter. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll read them all. Tap into the next one. Um, turn this damn volume off. All right, I have some things to say. First of all, okay. Fate. No, fuck. What the fuck? I'm probably not going to up upload Tsukihime for the next couple days. I want to go in and finish this, um, finish the fate route because... P3 Answer Arc is coming out soon on September 10th. And once that comes out, like 
everything is going to get put on the back burner. I'm so serious when I say that. Everything is going on the back burner. Like, so be ready for that. Uh, while I'm doing the P3 answer arc, I'm also going to um, be playing Tsukihime. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try and go as back and forth with that as I can. But once I play Persona, you know, I'm locked into Persona. So it's gonna be very hard for me to flip flop with Persona and anything else. So Tsukihime is gonna be slowing down a lot too for the P3 answer arc. All right, and on a more serious note, I just wanna go in and I'm, I just wanna get this out the way and say this now. I hit a thousand subscribers, that's awesome. I need to be monetized as soon as possible because I can't really keep funding these dang videos the way that I can't, I, I can't keep buying these games and stuff. And like, I don't really be, you know, if I don't, if I'm not making money off of this, I'm not really gonna have the time to keep making these videos at the speed that I'm making them, you feel me? So, I'm not asking y'all to do, like, I ain't asking for no damn GoFundMe, bro. I don't, you know, some, you know, some people need that shit, but I don't, I, I don't like the idea of just hopping in there talking about some send me money. I don't know. I don't like that. So all I'm asking is this, bro. If you fuck with me, man, all I'm asking, just like the video, you know, when you like the videos, it shows me to other people that might fuck with me. If you know somebody who might fuck with me, or you know somebody who fuck with one of the games that I'm playing, just send the shit to them. You know, just send them the shit. You know, leave comments, because the comments is what keeps me motivated. Like, I be having times and moments where it's like, I don't even want to do shit. I don't want to record. I don't want to do shit. I just want to lay down. I don't like, I, I, like this shit ain't going nowhere for real. I don't want to do shit. And then I look at my comments and I see what y'all be saying and shit. And then it makes me think like, fuck. Let me go in and give these niggas a video. You feel me? We just gotta, we, we, I just I just need y'all help to run this shit up. Cause when we run this shit up, I'm gonna be able to do so much more for y'all. I'm gonna be able to do, I'm gonna I'm be able to like, do so much more and better ways and stuff. You feel me? Like that's it. Like, I'm not asking y'all to send me no money. I'm asking y'all to share. Like just share my shit. Let people see my shit. You feel me? Spread my name and shit, bro. Like, it don't matter how you do that. Like, if you want to take clips of me and fucking post it on social media and TikTok and shit, I don't care, bro. Like, honestly, I'm going to be real with you. If I went, if I was on TikTok and I saw one of my fucking goofy ass clips next, goof, goofy ass clips next to fucking family guy, I think I'd laugh my ass off, bro. Join my Discord. Please join my Discord. Um... That's, you know, I, I, I have my Discord because I, I want y'all to, I want a community with y'all. I want to be able to communicate. And like, I, I even want like shit, like I always leave the Discord link in the bio. I even want shit where it's like, I can fucking play with y'all. Hey man, look, all I'm saying, just run them numbers up, man. I enjoy making these videos. So I, I'm, I'm gonna be able, I, I, so I, I need these numbers ran up so I can keep making them. Cause you know, if I stay at this stagnant, in this stagnant pace, this stagnant area where I'm just sitting right here, barely moving up. I deadass don't know how long I'll be able to do this before I'm forced into doing something else and I won't be able to upload no more. You feel me? So like, that's what I want to avoid the most. Cause this is my damn dream. Like, this is what I want. Like I want to do this shit. I don't want to do nothing else. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to avoid that outcome. You feel me? But peace out. I love y'all. Tap into the next one, man. I'm excited to be about to end this um, fate route. This shit was actually fucking insane. Holy shit.